G'day, podcaster. Liam here. Fun fact for you. Our boss texted us after this show and said it was our best he's ever heard. So either he's he's talking pie in the sky or it's actually decent. Um, we speak to a woman that you'll hear very shortly who lost something in her bum. Um, another dude told this wild story about how he got tasered so hard that something bad happened to him, like real bad. And uh, also, um, it was really nice. Ben, Bell, producer Andy, I assume, and everyone else, they all sort of pitched in and got me this like incredible birthday present um, from one of my favourite stars on the planet. Enjoy. Live across Australia, this is Ben, Liam and Bell's Late Drive! On Nova. What you're about to hear does need a content warning. If you're under the age of 18... <laughs> You should probably leave now. I think so. Absolutely. There's a TikTok that has blown up from a poor girl. She ended up in hospital on a first date because she got something stuck inside her. She joins us on the line now to tell us what happened. Alicia, what happened? Okay, so I went out on this date. First time I'd met this guy. It was really fun. Obviously, the vibe was there. So we ended up having sex on the first date. Um, it was really good. The sex was really good. And then decided that we would add a little bit of extra fun to it because why not? And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I felt something. And I was like, oh, and then I like put my hand down towards my butt. And then all of a sudden there's no plug anymore. And we were like pulling the doona and the pillows off the bed. Like, and I'm like, where the hell is it? Like it literally cannot be inside me. It can't be. Lo and behold, after a little bit of inspecting, there it is, <laughs> all the way up there, which was terrifying. I was like, holy crap, what do I do? And then, yeah, we ended up having to go out to the hospital because I was like, <laughs> no one is doing any more inspecting. I'm pretty much done with that. So you, you didn't and you didn't try and like get it out yourself? That wasn't an option? No, no we did. We oh, did. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> yes, he was an absolute trooper. He was definitely <laughs> trying to get it out. Of course he was. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you say he's a trooper. I, it's probably one of the better first dates this guy's had, I'd, I'd have to say. <laughs> probably. And then so we definitely tried to get it out, but there was just no way it was not coming out. And it was like the love heart shaped one, like the metal one. Yeah, well, Alicia, so... I saw that from the x-ray. It was the love heart <laughs> ones. And the metal <laughs> one, yeah? Yeah, yeah. One of those like metal aluminium kind yeah. of ones. Yeah. So, and so when so... you went to the doctor, were you very upfront? You said exactly what happened. What What did they oh, say? Yeah. I was so fine about it. I was like not, people were like, oh my God, I've been too embarrassed. But I'm like, oh, who cares? Like, can you imagine the stuff that people yeah. in the hospital have seen people come in with? Like, this is meant to be there. It's just not meant to be that far up mm. there. So, so how did they get it out, Alicia? So I had a couple of surgeons try and get it out um, using their fingers, but they couldn't. Same same issue. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alicia, but how many people's digits did you have up there in one evening? Oh, I had three different people's, Wonderful. but but they could only get one finger in there. Yeah. It wasn't easy, so they said, we have to like put you to sleep. So then I ended up having to sit in hospital for two days because there were just obviously more serious cases coming through. And mm. oh, I right. was just, yeah, I was just l- considered a low priority case because I wasn't in pain or anything. So, so hang I on. Just sat there. <laughs> you, you, you were sitting in the hospital for two days with a plug yeah. right up your, your, your keister? Yeah, literally. <laughs> have you kept... The butt plug, like if you got it on your mantelpiece or something like that, did they let you take it home? <laughs> they did ask me if I wanted to keep it, and I felt really bad to make them help me out with the situation, but then also have them clean it and give it back to me. And I do have many others at home, so I said, <laughs> throw it out, Aww. that's okay. Do you think you'll ever and use another one again, Alicia? I did, actually, I have already been Oh, okay, you're, already, you're back on the horse. <laughs> yeah, and Now who's the trooper, hey? <laughs> Exactly. I was terrified. I had eyes on it the entire time. I <laughs> did it for my for only fans. I was absolutely petrified. And Alicia, what, what about the guy? Have you seen him again? Uh, yes, I did see him for a little bit afterwards. But yeah, we we don't see each other anymore. Okay. Yeah, right. Look, so. you mentioned there um, only fans, obviously, Alicia. So it's technically a workplace injury, really. You could probably exactly. claim compo for this. <laughs> um, exactly. Did you want to give your uh, your Instagram a bit of a plug? A butt plug. Yeah. 
yeah, of course. Anyone who wants to find me, they can find me. My uh, Instagram handle is Little Brunette Batty. And if you want to find me on my OnlyFans, it's Little Brunette Batty VIP. And I will be there. Wow. What a story, hey? <laughs> 13, 24, 10, worst first dates. That's a great example of a first date that didn't go too well, ending pretty, up in hospital. Pretty hard one to top, to be fair, but all stories welcome. Definitely the worst date I ever went on uh, with a guy. He was very sweet, but he was like, oh, let's go to like this you know, pool table uh, hall. Mm. And I thought that would be fun. First date, thought he'd just do the honours of being a gentleman and maybe playing a tough game or letting me win even. But no, he just proceeded to absolutely thrash me and then was like the worst sport when it came to winning and was just so arrogant. And I just went home by myself that day. He's doing like Leighton Hewitt's in your face. (laughs) Come on! Five for five! I'm on fire tonight! We have got binge subscriptions to give away to our favourite callers here. 13, 24, 10. Worst first day. Izzy and Brizzy, what happened? I met a guy after work in the city. Um, Everything was well. I met him off Tinder. And my house was a bit far away and I was going to catch public transport. But he was like, oh, no, I can drive you home. And seems as the date went well, I was like, sure. Anyway, we start driving home and he is speeding. He's driving through red lights. So I messaged my friend being like, hey, can you call the police and tell them the number plate and I'm driving along so so road. Yeah. Oh man. Um and he proceeds to go through another red line <laughs> and the police come up and arrest him. Oh my oh, god. Jeez. You got your date arrested. <laughs> That's I mean and, you know if he's gone through two red lights I mean you're not safe. You, I mean did you yeah. did you sort of ask him to pull over or did you just think you, you didn't feel comfortable doing that? I didn't feel comfortable. Yeah, no, fair. He sounds like a psycho, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good way to end the date, though, I guess. Oh, well, was yeah, he showing off? Like, Yeah, it feels like he's, he's probably watched all the Fast and Furious <laughs> movies before the date, and he was like, oh, I know what I'm going to do tonight. Izzy, thank you so much. 13, 24, 10. We're looking for the worst first dates. Ash in Melbourne, what happened? Um, I was on a first date. The boy said he wanted to go to the movies. I was like, okay, let's go. Only movie that had tickets was Despicable Me number three. <laughs> Ended up going in halfway through the movie. I look over, the boy starts crying. <gasps> really? Yeah. Um, at the end of the movie, I said, you know, today was great. Um, I said, I'll speak to him soon. Went home, blocked him. I'm like, not having this. Do you know why <laughs> Despicable Me three made him cry? I've got no clue. I was laughing at the point. He turned to the. I turned to the side. He was crying. Yeah, was he I mean, okay? I suppose maybe he was, he was a bit upset. I think Gru was trying to steal the moon with the minions, and I no, don't that's maybe. the first one. What's he trying to steal in the third one? Do you, do you remember Ash? What he was trying to steal and <laughs> Despicable Me three? No. Okay, yeah, so you're probably stressing about the the guy crying next year. I get that. <laughs> uh, Lauren, worst first dates. What happened? Um. So I. <laughs> Met up with this guy. I never go into the city to meet someone, and I was like, you know what? We'll just see what happens. Met him um, first of all, not at the place we had originally agreed. First red flag. Mm-hmm. Um, he had said he'd planned this really nice date at a restaurant that he liked. Turned up, didn't book anything. We walked around the city for I reckon an hour. Went to like ten places, which they all either were closing, couldn't take us, too full, whatever. Um, he ended up. Um, we ended up going back to his car. He did a big one-arm swipe of rubbish off his passenger seat. Whoa. And um, not only did he make me pay for the parking, leaving Crown Casino, but he also took me to a KFC drive through oh and got me God. a go bucket. What a catch. <laughs> oh, a go bucket. I mean, that's not even one of the expensive ones. I mean, you at least think you're getting a zinger box for a first date. And you had to pay for the parking. I love the move, go. though. <laughs> <laughs> get the passenger seat. <laughs> Which would have been majority go buckets, I imagine. If this, this oh. guy's a big Kentucky Fried Pig, he's just going to have boxes everywhere. Thank you very much, Lauren. Uh, let's go Jay in Sydney. Worst first dates. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for taking off some primary school teacher from Sydney. Um, this happened a couple of years ago. It was at the start of the year. Went on a date with a single mum. Really fun, um, had sex at the end of the night, okay. um, and then following week, I started my new school. Anyway, first, the date actually went fine. Uh, first week, 
start them a new school. Um, a kid in my class got into a bit of a, a punch up. So anyway, had to call up the parents, get them to come in to discuss the matter. Anyway, sp- hadn't met any of the parents. Mum walks in for the face to face interview, and guess who it is? Oh, wow. wow. The bird from the first date, I'd imagine. Yep. So it was her. Um, bit awkward as walking in the door, you know, like, oh, you know, this is your new teacher. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it made our parent teacher interviews for the rest of the year a little bit awkward, but. Um, yeah, it was a fun night. And, was um, the can I can I ask Jay? Was there was there a dad in the scene or not really? No. Okay. So, um, I, luckily, yeah, dad wasn't around. I never met him, but I stayed at that school for a couple of years, and I have seen him around. I'm sure he probably has no idea that I actually had sex with his wife. Yeah. Um, I do think that the mum may have passed the story on because I'd get a few little giggles and winks and things like that um, over the years. But, yeah, um, yeah from I other parents. Had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's good you sort of, you know, you've been respectful about it. I mean, I, that would destroy the kid's life if, if it was found out in the, you know, playground <laughs> that, you know, Mr. Simpson had it on with his mum. You would get absolutely drilled. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz if you are on Raya, the exclusive dating app, because Chase Crawford, a.k.a. Nate from Gossip Girl. XOXO. Gossip Girl. Oh my gosh, what a day. He said that he's single, ready to mingle, and he's on Raya. So Raya, just for people that have never heard of it before, Bill, it's 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 like Tinder, but for celebrities and hot people. Pretty much. Influencers, yeah, like sportsmen. You have to apply to be on it. You have to be of a certain calibre. You have to like fully, yeah, you have to be invited, all that. It's not just Tinder. You don't just sign up. Mm-hmm. So um, it's just, I suppose it's like a more exclusive nightclub. You yeah. know, sometimes those clubs you just get turned away from. Is that just me, guys? Mm. <laughs> but you know, there there is. There's there's nightclubs like that. It's Social just... media with no ugly people. Be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. pretty much, pretty much. I'd have and to deactivate all my accounts. <laughs> yeah, apparently there's no location like settings on it, so you could match with a Hollywood star over in the US. For well, that example. seems annoying though, because if you're a celebrity and you're looking for a for a one night stand. And then you match with someone here in Australia and you're in America. That doesn't help you. Yeah, but if you're, for example, someone in Melbourne and you're on this app and because it's so exclusive, there would be like five other people. Right, So gotcha. they've got to make it a bigger pond. Yeah, and, and maybe they could send a private jet out or something. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Anon joins us now in Sydney. You're on Raya. Hi, guys. I am. Oh, right. And are you, are, are you, you're not in Gossip Girl or anything like that, are you? <laughs> would we recognise you from something or? No, no, not quite of that calibre, okay. but still keen to stay on non today. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and how fair. long have you been on Raya for? Well, way too long, sadly. I think I've been on there for over two years. Right. So, so no yeah. luck for me yet, guys. No luck for me. Yeah, and so they say. I think you know. I think it's Tinder's slogan. It's like it's like the dating app. You're only you're supposed to delete it after like a month because you that's, you know meet that, the yeah, perfect. That's hinge. That's hinge, is yep. it? Oh, okay, so God. I don't. Well, I'm not on either. <laughs> one. Uh, so what you you think Raya's like a bit harder maybe to make that special someone? I think so. It's as um, everyone was just saying with Belle just saying being global makes it pretty hard sometimes because I've matched with some pretty fabulous people. There was one person I was talking to for over a year, mm. but he was in LA. Classic. And mm. it was, I'm busy, work is busy, he was busy, work is busy, and we ended up getting to the point that he, en- he ended up meeting someone and she's now pregnant. So- oh, right. <laughs> oh, it could have been you, you Anon. It could have <laughs> been you. <laughs> it could have been me. It could have been me, but we just couldn't make it work. It was still... You know, tricky COVID times, everyone coming back to life. So, mm. yeah, it's, um, there's some some good people on there. I'm not going to lie. I did see John Mayer. John, Whoa. John Mayer. That's um, big. But then there's also some pretty average, you know, tech bro type guys. So, <laughs> but still, then te- you know, and a, a I'm not saying you're, you're in it for that, but I'm sure there'd be tech bros with more money than John Mayer, yeah. you know what I mean? You, yeah, you could have ended up dating the next uh, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah, and he's jacked now. Like, he's, he's had a jacked. bit of like, If you're rich enough, at some point you do get better looking. True, that's you know? true. Is there anybody else? John May is great. Is there anyone else that you've seen on there? There's lots of people. There's actually some because it does link your Instagram profile, so you have to put that on there. There's no way of escaping without uh, 
having your Insta. So there's a few people that I've been surprised by because I don't think I'm 100% up to speed with like who's famous right now, mm-hmm. you know, who's a celeb. And there's been a couple of cute English boys I've clicked on the profile thought, you know, I'll just look into what they do and they've got 4.5 million followers oh, and they're some famous, you know, young actor that I'm sure is in, you know, the hottest films at the moment that I'm not across. <laughs> yeah, like Barry <laughs> Keegan or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, well, but I have seen, um, I saw, do you know who always pops up? Diplo. <laughs> oh, yeah, Diplo. Oh, Diplo. Hey, yeah, and he's, he's, he's got a couple of kids, but he does seem like he's been, he's playing the field. He, yeah. Diplo so, gives off F-boy energy. Yeah, big yes. time. Big yeah, time. he did like an Look, underwear I hope campaign. I'm not outing him because I don't think we're supposed to talk about oh, him uh, on there. And I did yeah. get a warning once for trying to screenshot. So. Oh, oh, right. So it's a little bit like Fight Club. Like you're not really allowed to tell people that you're on, on it or I was doing it. Snapchat, exactly. but okay. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much. I don't want to get you into trouble by listing off anybody else. Yeah, maybe we'll stop it there so we don't get you deleted <laughs> from Raya. Anon, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, guys. Oh, stop it, guys. A massive happy birthday, 28th birthday, oh, what? to our best bud, Liam, over oh, there. Yeah. Yeah, 13th of June. That's my birthday. <laughs> now, I, I thought you guys forgot. No, no. we didn't forget. Oh. We actually, we have put a lot of effort and thought into this birthday, Liam. Right. And we were like, what does Liam love? Yeah. And we thought, Harry Potter. Oh, I do love Harry Potter. I'm very into it. As you can tell by not only this show, but Liam's Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I do impersonate Lord Voldemort and Severus Snape um, and chase my wife around. Now, we did kind of the standard thing where we jumped onto Cameo and we're having a look at who we can get messages from. Yeah. And it was mainly the Weasley twins. Yeah. yeah They've uh, got a big presence uh, I'm, on I'm aware they're pretty active in the HP world still. A lot of, a lot of guys distance themselves. I know Daniel Radcliffe, you know, mm-hmm. famously played Harry Potter. He's done a lot of different roles. Just yep. trying to get away from it, you know, but the Weasley yeah. twins there. Yeah, now, doing stuff. we didn't get the Weasley twins, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Because they, they would, I would have been happy with that. Like if they were saying happy birthday, like Fred and George, great. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went bigger. Oh, you did? Then the Weasley twins. Seriously? Who's bigger than Weasley? Oh, uh, it's not the whole pass, is it? Emma Watson. You're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Now, it sounds weird when I say it's my whole pass and then you play the audio <laughs> from when she's five, but I'm very much in the later years. Mm-hmm. Just to clarify. Yep. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to be played, okay? <laughs> now, she's not on Cameo. Bugger. But... As a team, we've been putting in the hard yards, mainly producer Andy. Yep. He's reached out to her team. Yes. And we've got you a little message. Yeah. For your birthday. What? Hello, Liam. It's Emma Watson here. Um, I just wanted to say two things to you. Firstly, uh, happy 28th birthday. And secondly, I absolutely love your Harry Potter Instagram impression videos. The new one you put up on the weekend with the wand that shoots fire is so cool. Ben and Belle told me that I'm your hall pass. I'm very flattered, but I'm sorry to say I don't date fans. Anyway, happy birthday, Liam. She sounds a bit Australian. (laughs) I mean, that can't be actually Emma Watson. That's actually Emma Watson. It's not. You mean it's not. It's not. What do you mean it's not? No, I don't buy it. It's AI. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously. Damn it. We couldn't, we couldn't get Emma Watson. I, mean, I know, obviously. <laughs> I mean, it's still, I, I'll be lying if I'm not going to play it to myself tonight. <laughs> like, I want the audio. I want, I want, I want the email and, yeah. like, just send it to me and Mate, I'll, I'll keep that. Wait to see the footage. There's AI footage. Oh. <laughs> 13, 24, 10. Have you ever been tasered. There's footage going viral over in the States. It's a baseball game. Guy, streaker, not streaking, but he jumps onto the field. Pitch invader, jumps onto the field. He's running across, gets tasered, absolutely goes down. And it does make you wonder, what's that sensation you must get when your whole body just drops? The crowd goes wild when it happens. Uh, Jimmy in Geelong, you've been tasered. Uh, How are we, gang? Good, Jimmy. What happened? Uh, yeah, I, I managed to get a taser back from Bali about ten years ago, oh, back in back in 2013. 
Yeah. Um, disguise the torch. Yeah, right. Because um, I feel like you'd you'd potentially do time, right? If they caught you trying to bring a taser over, like technically a weapon. Oh uh, yeah, right? I'm not prob- probably now. I'm not sure. Ten years ago, they might have been a bit more lenient. I don't know. And so was this but, barley taser? Like, was it like you know, like y- you you can get tasered and it's like, oh, that's you know, if it was like you're licking the end of a battery, or does it do some damage? No, no, it had had some kick to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So, like a bit. This isn't like the ones that the cops have. It's more like cattle prod type thing, right? No, no yeah, it's just the yeah, it's just the ones that they that they can sell you. It was yeah, it was disguised as a torch. Well, it was a torch. Yeah, it was it was a torch and a taser. And so, what but happened just, with the taser, like, Jimmy? What did you what did you do with it? Um, obviously, we had to. You know, curiosity gets the better of you. You got to you got to give it a go. Um. It's more. It more just puts you into a state of shock, and you kind of just lock up. But it does. It does sting. But, Sorry, uh, Jimmy. Just to... so I can really clarify the picture, you tasered yourself. Oh no, you can't do it to yourself because your brain, like your brain, kind of stops you from doing that. Yeah, you got to get someone else to do it too. So you. a mate. Yeah, yeah, just a friend. <laughs> do you still have and... it, Jimmy? I uh, I think I do somewhere packed away, but I um I lost the charging cable mm-hmm. like ah, years right. ago, and I couldn't I couldn't find. It was some real obscure cable that I don't even know if you can get them in Australia. Yeah. So it, it's been flat for about 10 years. I've got to tell you, though, Jimmy, that is probably the best possible call you can get from a mate if they say, hey, I've just come home from Bali. Do you want to come around mine and taser me in the shed? <laughs> I would break land speed records to get okay. there and do that. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but that, to me, that is like natural selection at its finest. Well, he's if fine. you went down, I'd be like, well, yeah, yeah, Jimmy's all right. you just... You did that to yourself. <laughs> Jimmy's doing all good. Thanks for your call, Jimmy. Uh, Keegan joins us in Brizzy. Have you been tasered? I have. I um, had a mate come back from Thailand one year and um, we're all over his house just having a few beers. And he goes, oh, boys, I've, I picked up a little taser on the way home. And I was like, we're all like, oh, yeah, well, you know, being on the beers, you've you got a bit of confidence in you. And um, we were all handing around, having a go. And I said to him, I said, does it hurt? And he goes... I've never done it to myself. I said, oh, I'll give it a go. So I tasered my abdomen, my stomach, and um, I sort of shit myself. <laughs> so they say when you, ta- when you get tased, you sort of, you, you, you know, your bowels sort of release. And, um, yeah, I shit me back then and there. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I didn't expect that, I'm Keegan. Gonna, I'm going to reiterate what I said before, <laughs> Keegan. I just... What, what do you think is going to happen? That, like, what? Well, probably not shit yourself, to be honest. That wouldn't have been on the... I, I would think have a heart attack before shit yourself. Oh, I bet the boys would have loved it. We're joined now by George, who is an ex-cop who's actually been tasered with a real police-grade taser 13 times. Uh, George, scale of 1 to 10, how much does it hurt? I reckon 9.9. Wow. Right up. So what's a 10 then, that being shot, I suppose? Well, my daughter said when she got tasted, she turned around to 45 specialist police and said it wasn't as painful as childbirth, so I'd have to give her that. Oh, really? Whoa. Okay. So, because Ben's wife, Sam, she had a baby last year's first son, the only one with kids on on the team. If... If you were to taser him, say, he could then say, I've been through worse than what you've been through. Yeah, and that wouldn't go down well, no, George. <laughs> um, so can you describe the feeling of being tasered? Well, the important thing first to consider, to listen about, is tasering someone, uh, It's a it can be a pain compliancy thing where it really hurts, but if you're drug, alcohol, rage, or mentally affected, you may not feel that pain. Mm, yeah, right. You're a normal person like maybe yourself, you'll experience an extremely large amount of pain and it's like you're being hit by a lightning bolt first and then it just continues on for the longest five seconds in your life. And when it's finished, you just want to turn around and, and kiss the bloke who stopped it because he stopped it, you know. It, yeah. It's very painful. Once it finishes, George, how, like, is there throbbing pain for ages after or is it just no. in the moment? No. It's like going to the gym. Each muscle in your body is pulsated 19 times a second. Whoa. So it's like having a gym workout. So if you ever want to miss out on a gym day, you can tase yourself and it's a sort of similar sort of uh, feeling at the end of it. So, and you know, I suppose that little prongs go in when you, you know, we've all seen it on the TV, the two prongs shoot out. I'm assuming from what you're expla- explaining, the, the pain of being tasered far outweighs the little prongs piercing your skin. You're not even really going to notice that, are you? No, you don't feel them at all. In fact, a lot of people that we've tasered over the years have walked away dragging the darts with them 
we've had to stop them and say, hang on, we're going to take the darts out of it. And they're barbed. Oh. They're fish hooks. Oh. So, oh. Oh. I didn't even know that's how it worked. Yeah, they George, get right in there. Is it when you get tasered, you said five seconds, is, it, is that the standard length of time or is it as long as they hold a trigger? It, well, as long as they hold the trigger. Wow. Initially, it's it squeeze the trigger five seconds, and then if they sh- are a continued real and impending threat, you yep. just squeeze the trigger again. <sighs> George, is it true? Uh, I've heard this. I don't know if it's true or not, but is it true that before you taser someone, you have to yell taser three times? Yeah, look, it, what it is, it's a mindset. It's a training thing, muscle memory in training. So you should say taser, 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 and then deploy the taser because... What it lets everyone else know, every other police officer around, and you don't want a, a sympathetic shooting with a firearm. So if someone thinks, "Well, that was a, a gun," mm. they'll pull out their gun and start shooting. Oh. You know? Of course, of course, so yeah, it's a warning to everyone. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting because I, I I remember seeing it on the news one night, and like obviously you know police officers are brought into all sorts of situations, and you, you always want to be safe, and sometimes you need to use it. But I think there was yep. a guy on a tram with yes. a knife. And, but the guy who tasered him, which he had to do, he was doing the right thing to yeah. protect everyone, he sounded very excited that he finally got to say it because I think it was something along the lines of, taser, taser, taser! <laughs> like he was taking a mark or a specky or something like that. George, aside from tasers, have you had any other weapons tried on you? Have you been pepper sprayed or anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've been um, OC sprayed, CS sprayed with tear gas. Yeah, well, George, thank you so much for your time this evening. I mean, it's fascinating. Can't say I want to be tasered anytime soon, <laughs> um, and I'm not looking to get into police force. So I suppose I'm just going to just keep out of trouble, and I should be all right. Thanks for your time, George. Pleasure. There's a band in there, Bell and Liam too. Round up the kids, we've got something for you. Turn up the dial and listen for a while. Bedtime stories. All right, all right. Gather around your radio. This is the perfect way to end your night with a bedtime story. Yeah. Let's meet the class. We got Zoe, who's 12. How you doing? Good, how are you? We're good. And Cooper, you're nine. How are you? Good. And Maximilian, good evening. How old are you? Seven. Seven. All right, class, are we ready for a bedtime story? Yes. Yeah, okay. They sound like they're ready, Liam. Okay, well, let's kick into it. This is a story that mum and dad might recognise, but I doubt you kids will. Today, guys, I'm going to be reading Shh, Lambs, Be Quiet. (laughs) Once upon a time, there lived a farmer whose lambs kept going missing. So a little girl called Clarice decided to find them. She searched high and low, all over the farm, through the forest and in the town, but they were all nowhere to be seen. So she decided to ask some help from a wolf called Hungry Hungry Hannibal. Please help me, Hannibal, Clarice cried. The wolf replied, I'll help you, Clarice. Right after I eat this liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. (laughs) After his lunch, Hungry Hungry Hannibal told Clarice to ask Bill the Buffalo about the missing lambs. So, she went to his house, deep in the woods, and to her surprise, Hannibal was right. All the lambs were being hidden down a well. Bill the Buffalo had been keeping them there and rubbing lotion on them so he could use their soft wool to make lampshades that he could sell at the markets. Clarice rescued all the lambs to take them back to the farmer, but before she could get the last one out, Bill the Buffalo came home. Oh no! So to scare him off, she sprayed him with a water pistol. Bill got really upset and he decided to go and have a nap. Forever. The end. Wow, what a story. Well told, Liam. Now, let's see if the class has got any questions. Zoe, did you have a question? Yeah, what's a Chianti? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's it's like a red wine. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good question, Zoe. So you're still a few years off having one of those. Cooper, have you got a question? How is a water pistol 
going to do anything. Oh, I don't know. I mean, he was a buffalo. He's sort of easily frightened, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Was it a really strong water pistol? It was like a super, super soaker. soaker. Do you have, like, what's what's the um, most powerful um, water pistol you have, Cooper? A Nerf gun? Yeah, yeah. So it was like, yeah, more powerful than a Nerf gun. <laughs> yeah, wow. Only slightly. Yeah. All yeah. right, Cooper, thanks for your question. <laughs> Maximilian, do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Why was Hannibal so hungry? He, he was just... He was just a big fatty. He would. He was a big fat wolf, and he would eat anything he could get his hands on, even other wolves sometimes. Which wow, kind of crazy. It is. You're not really supposed to do that. Well, uh, everybody, thanks for uh, listening to Story Time. Thank, Thank you. you. No worries, See guys. You. Enjoy the rest of your night. Off to bed. Off to bed. The lot of years. Past your bedtime. Bedtime stories. Hey, that was bedtime stories. Thanks for listening. Finish this sentence on thirteen twenty four ten. I'm the only one in the world who doesn't like. Because Daniel Radcliffe has come out, Harry Potter, and he said he doesn't like The Sopranos. Are you kidding me? It's like the best show of all time. In fact, I think if you look up best show of all time, I'm pretty sure it's like top of the list on all the lists. You know what? 13, 24, 10, if you get involved with this, we'll give you a binge subscription and you can watch The Sopranos. Sopranos. I'm pretty sure it's on there. Yeah. they got all the good HBO stuff. Is there something in the world that you don't like, Ben? Well, I always get stick for this when I say it. I don't like cheese. Yeah, it's annoying. It is actually annoying. Never liked it. Yeah. Like but, any type. Well, no no cheese, um, but I do like pizza. I like it when it goes crispy, but it doesn't taste like cheese on pizza. It's different. Whereas, oh. like, if so I get, do you know what I mean? It's just like, just, just eat the cheese. No, I just like. don't like it. And if I get it on a hamburger, it ruins the whole burger. He gets really angry. And, then and he, like, say, he tries to pick it out, and then if it's melted, he gets really angry. <laughs> people say scrape the cheese off, but it's not. It's it's melted into the meat. Uh, I can taste uh, it in the meat fibers. <laughs> you know, it's not the same. I don't like cheese. I'm the only person, but yeah, I, no, I, don't I don't like it. That annoys me. I think I'm the only person in the world, not the TV show, but I don't like Seinfeld. <laughs> I think. I think Seinfeld, the show, and Jerry Seinfeld are both lame. I think if you were looking at that list of iconic TV shows, you got Sopranos, and then just below it, you got Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I don't get it. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I suppose I haven't given it that much time, and I'm just like, it's not mm. really my type of humor. And I guess probably right on that list underneath that is what I don't like, which is The Simpsons. <laughs> No, no, no. I won't hear it. I won't hear it. Simpsons is the greatest TV show ever oh, made. There's a couple of episodes. You're like, oh, that's pretty funny. Oh, that's classic. No, because it, it's such base humour. If you're laughing at a guy that goes, don't. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> but oh, my God. It was even wow. funny when you did it, Bill. Wow. <laughs> Ben's loving it. Wow. No, Ben today, like, cited, like, a really big pop culture thing because he was like, oh, well, there was a Simpsons episode about it. Mm. Like, you can't just learn things about the world from that. 13, 24, 10. Am I the only one in the world that doesn't like blank? Jess in Melbourne, what is it? I don't like Taylor Swift. Whoa. Be careful. Be careful. I don't don't understand the fascination worldwide with her. She just... It's the same, same, same. Yeah, and Jess, look, thank you for calling the show and we're going to hire some private security for you because the Swifties will come for you and they will do bad things. They will. Uh, Casey in Sydney joins us now. Finish this sentence. I'm the only one in the world that doesn't like. This is super controversial and I get so much hate for it, but I don't like hot chips. Casey, I don't think we can stand for that. I mean, so (laughs) hot chips? Yeah, hot chips. I yeah, just what, do you, what do you mean? What's not to like about hot chips? I just, like, I don't understand why they need to be, like, as a side with everything. <sighs> and I don't really get, like, you know, like, why you need nah, to... Nah, I've had enough of you, Casey. They're hot, they're <laughs> potato, they're salty, they're delicious. Yeah, no, I'm, no, no, I'm no. actually tasting it now. You can't, you can't, we can't ask people to call up and then you just say no. Bill, I run this show. I can do whatever <laughs> I like. <laughs> 13, 24, 10 is our number. Am I the only person in the world that doesn't like blank? Finish that sentence. Give us a buzz. Uh, Jaden in Melbourne, why don't you like... Uh, chocolate, mate. Chocolate. No, Rubbish. Mate. no, I don't know if we'll be having that. Uh, so are we talking white chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, all of it? White, dark, milk, whatever it is, no good. Man. Chocolate, nah, no what, about, good. what about chocolate with like uh, like little candies in it, little popping candies? Yeah, Marvelous Creations. No, I'll have none of it. Wow, and you've never liked it. You've never liked chocolate. 
Never liked it. Not, oh, none of it. Yeah, I, and I understand if you're annoying because you're having this conversation all the time, but I genuinely can't wrap my head around that. Like, I don't just... think I've ever met someone. I get like lollies maybe. I don't mm-hmm. really like lollies myself. Yeah, nah. Like It's a bit like, nah, but chocolate is... I mean, it's the best. Absolutely. And I also get some people like dark, some people like milk chocolate, but yeah. just f- flat out what about, milk chocolate. What about, Jaden, uh, ice magic? Have you ever had that on top of ice cream before? <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, but like, it, that, that, that was just like, it, it was cool because of what it did, but it just didn't taste good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't taste good. Yeah, okay. At least we can all agree it's pretty cool. Uh, Kath in Melbourne, you're the only person in the world who doesn't like... The Game of Thrones. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> it's a very good show, Kath. I mean, have you actually sat down and watched more than a couple of episodes? I've tried and I just can't. Yeah, Kath, it to be just honest. It me. Yeah, I'm the same. I started it because I was, I was like, okay, well, if I work in the media, I need to be across this because it was huge. And it's just, it was so tough. You know what, you know what, Kath? Belle, Belle, you're so dumb. You didn't like <laughs> Simpsons. You don't like Game of Thrones. What do you like? Gossip Girl. I knew you were going to say Gossip Girl. I knew it. Because that's the only show you watch. Oi, Kath. Uh, what? Kath, be, yes. be honest with yes. us. When you were watching it, did you have your phone yep. in your hands? Did you have, no. Are you, are you sure? Because I feel I'm like... I'm not a big phone person. Uh... You don't like phones. That's more crazy. <laughs> Because I feel like if you're going to watch Game of Thrones, you've got to concentrate. Otherwise, yeah, it, it goes too quick. Then like, it's not fun. It's work. What? You shouldn't be on your phone while you're watching things. You're supposed to Liam, save your then. breath. She doesn't <laughs> like it. Uh, Michelle in Sydney. What is it? Hey, how you going? I don't like watching sport on TV or live or anything. It's so boring. Yeah, but, like, do you have a team at all? Or? Only my kids. Soccer teams, I don't even like Oh, that's that, not really. good quality. You know, it's, it's better <laughs> I mean, than that. Michelle, you've obviously never seen the 2019 Masters, right? No. Yeah, <laughs> what's who that? They are. Yeah, no, no, not, not who they <laughs> are. Have you, have you seen? It's a tournament where they wear the green jackets. You know the golf one? Yeah, it's that one. It's really good. <laughs> For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.